if we did not acknowledge the unprecedented situation we are all facing, both professionally and personally. We hope that you and yours are safe and healthy. And we also would like to thank you for the work that you are doing to keep your agency's mission moving forward under very difficult circumstances. At GSA, we are committed to sharing resources and providing you with information during these critical times. We have set up a website, which you see on the screen, as a hub of information. This page will be continually updated as we move forward and through this situation. Thanks for joining us today for the Client Enrichment Series presentation and introduction to PBS Project Management. I'm Dave Hofstetter, and I'm the Director of the Client Development Division in GSA's Southeast Sunbelt Region 4 in Atlanta. More importantly, I'm your host for today's session. Before we begin, I do want to let everyone know that we are recording this session. We post archived Client Enrichment Series videos <clears throat> on our YouTube channel, and you can access more than two dozen past sessions anytime, day or night. There's a link to our YouTube channel at the end of today's slide deck. Today's presentation will be given by Steve Scarbo and Don Cardell, Small Projects Zone Managers in the National Small Projects Program in the Office of Design and Construction, PBS Central Office, Washington, D.C. As such, Steve and Don are national leaders on a team that provides training to the Small Projects National Community. Steve has over 32 years of federal experience, beginning as a Peace Corps volunteer in the Yemen Arab Republic, where he performed superbly as an architect and project manager. Upon his return to the good old USA, Steve joined the Department of Justice, where he again performed extraordinarily well as an architect and project manager for numerous projects in a number of DOJ headquarters offices. In 2001, he joined GSA in Region 9, where he served for two years as the Construction Services Branch Chief in the San Diego Service Center, before assuming the position of Branch Chief for the Asset and Budget Management Staff of the Los Angeles Service Center, responsible for oversight of the real property inventory totaling 6 million square feet in 16 federally owned buildings. After graduating from GSA's Advanced Development Leadership Program in 2009, Steve headed back east and joined the National Small Projects Program based in Washington, D.C. as the program team lead. He now serves as the Small Projects Zone C Manager for the program, overseeing and supporting PBS regional offices in San Francisco, Denver, and Seattle, and as the national lead for training development for small project managers. Steve has a BA in architecture from the University of Cincinnati and currently resides in the Redwood Forest, north of San Francisco. Don Cottle was born and raised in New York City and started his career with GSA in 1992 as an engineering trainee in the regional office in New York. While in New York, Don worked his way up to project manager and has experience managing a wide range of repair and alteration products. Don changed roles and went to Chicago in 2006 as the property manager for the Everett M. Dirksen U.S. Courthouse. Don returned to his technical background in 2009 as the technical supervisor for Chicagoland, and in 2012, he took on the role of program analyst and EPM coordinator in the region's newly formed project management office. In 2016, Don joined the Office of Design and Construction as a small project zonal manager for Zone B. Don holds a Bachelor of Engineering degree from Manhattan College and a Master of Science in Management of Technology from Polytechnic University. He earned his PMP credential in 2003 
from the Project Management Institute. He is married with two children, ages 17 and 21. Steve will now review the full agenda and then educate you all on PBS Project Management. And we also will have uh, a couple of subject matter experts to answer questions in the chat pane. Before I turn the presentation over to Steve and Don, I'd like to share a few housekeeping instructions. Once again, please be aware that we are recording this session and that we post archived client enrichment series seminars on our YouTube channel, the link to which is on the last page of your slide deck. Speaking of that slide deck, if you did not receive an email with a PDF of today's presentation slides, let us know and one of our team members will send it to you right away. We have automatically muted your audio to help us control the sound quality of the presentation. If you experience any audio issues during today's presentation, first, please check the audio level on your phone or computer speaker. If you hear a crackling or static in the background, you can try hanging up or disconnect your audio and reconnecting. For the best experience, we recommend utilizing the listen-only option, which broadcasts the audio through your computer speakers. If you have a question during the presentation, please use the chat pane. You can find it on the right side of your screen. Type your question or comment in the box, and your fellow attendees and our team of subject matter experts will see your question. We hope to encourage an interactive dialogue using this feature. We will try to address all questions during the session today, either in the chat or as part of the presentation. Any questions that we are unable to get to today will be noted, and all questions will be answered and posted on our www.gsa.gov slash CES website. If you prefer to suppress the chat panel, you can click on the four-headed arrow at the upper right-hand corner of your presentation screen to maximize your screen view. Should you have a comment or question, you can toggle right back to the chat pod by hovering over the upper right-hand corner of your screen and selecting the four-headed arrow again. Then the chat will reappear. Okay, now we're gonna get an idea of our audience by uh, administering a couple of poll questions. And can I have the first one, please? Okay, as an introduction to this presentation, what is your role in project delivery with, with GSA? And if we could move that up just a little bit, I think it's not quite. Okay, so if you could just go ahead and uh, put your answers in there, that would help us out tremendously. Okay. Uh, all right, Steve, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's very interesting. It's good to see a lot of project managers out there. Okay, uh, can we have number two, please? What types of projects do you typically work on with GSA? Uh, we're getting quite a response there. All right, Steve, what do you think on that one? Yeah, it's good to see a lot of small projects folks out there. Um, and it looks like a lot of folks are dealing in lease space as well. 
Very interesting. I'd love to answer your questions later. Okay, great. All right. Um, Steve and Don, I'm going to throw this presentation over to you. All right. Thanks, Dave. And uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us today. Um, I'm going to just jump right in. Our agenda today is, um, um, as you see, ninefold. Uh, we're going to be first looking at our project, uh, the, really setting the stage. What is, what's, the, what's our project universe? Then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, PBS's project life cycle, um, our, our roadmap to how we go, uh, how we do projects from cradle to grave. And then um, a little later, we'll talk about what makes a project successful. And um, those, the major points on that are scope management, schedule management, and cost management. And then we'll talk a bit about communications and partnership and, and all, all the different initiatives that we're doing in, in those realms. And then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about um, what project excellence is and then what you can look forward to. So our federal project universe. So PBS's mission is um, to deliver value and savings in real estate acquisition technology and other mission-supported services across the government. But particularly for, uh, for us, um, PBS is really looking for what we're calling project delivery excellence. And, those, and what that means for us is we want to deliver effective projects, we want to optimize our own workforce, and we want to foster any kind of innovation and excellence that we can. So, um, and those are the, the, the big objectives, the bigger circles there. So the way we, the way we try to do, deliver effective projects is we have some metrics um, and some performance measuring that we do for ourselves, and we do a lot of training for our workforce. Um, with our workforce and our project managers, we also, um, at the national level and at the regional level, we develop a lot of tools and templates that can be used to make projects more efficient and work better. And all that together, all, all those things that overlap, that's, that's how we get to project delivery excellence. So our project universe um, in, G in PBS is uh, very, it's basically three buckets. They're, they're capital projects. These are projects that are prospectus level, which are over the 3.095 million uh, threshold that we're currently on. Then there's small projects. That are, uh, those projects that are under, under prospectus. And then we have leasing projects. Uh, so today, what we're going to be, we're going to focus on small projects, and those are the under prospectus projects uh, under the 3.095 million. These are all repair and alteration projects and client projects and GSA-owned buildings, and they are either GSA and or RWA funded. So another little pause here. We just want to kind of set the stage. Even though in PBS we call our program small, small projects, you know, there's a huge impact on, on, on what we do. So PBS, um, just in a nutshell, we own or lease more than 8,600 assets. And that's approximately 50-50 on lease versus owned. Uh, we, may, we maintain approximately 370 million square feet of workspace for about a million federal employees across the country. And we also have um, uh, 487 historic prop properties that we preserve and maintain as well. So at this point, uh, PBS has approximately 600 full-time um, small project managers. And then we have another 400 that are, we call part-time project managers because uh, the way we're set up, a lot of our building and facility managers are also uh, small project managers. So for small projects, we deliver between eight and 12,000 small projects each year. Um, and with those projects, uh, we're currently delivering, um, uh, with our performance measures, 86% of, of our projects are on time and 84% are on budget. Um, so in that field, you know, our national minor or small RNA program is, um, which we call our 54 program, it's about $380 million worth of work annually. On the RWA side, uh, we deliver seven to 10,000 RWAs worth 
and that's true. This is that is a B, 1.2 billion dollars uh, annually. So you add that on top of the, the RWA program of a total of 26,000 RWAs from past years that are still being worked on, plus uh, uh, new RWAs that come in each year. There's about four billion dollars worth of work happening uh, at any one time. So let's just talk about uh, some project manager basics, uh, management basics. So what we really strive for and what the industry strives for in, in uh, construction project management is, is what's called the project management triangle. Um, this is kind of a fundamental concept that all project managers use. Um, and this triangle is defined by three project constraints. And those are cost, time, and uh, scope. So obviously, cost the cost constraint refers to the project budget. It's also about um, cost management throughout the project, change orders and all that kind of thing. Um, all that uh, within the budget um, so that we are meeting all project requirements and deliver those that final product uh, on, on schedule. Speaking about schedule, that this is a schedule that um, was agreed upon and, and uh, achievable. Um, through through the, the requirements development and um, kickoff meetings and whatnot we, we, we do. And this schedule um, has in PBS we have some series we have a series of milestones that we do track, um, but there's a, there's a lot of, uh, of other things we, we track as well. And then scope, obviously we're scope managing all the time. These are the technical and functional objectives that define what's supposed to be done and what the quality of that project is. So not only is the requirements development that you folks give us, but it's also uh, any design guides, um, any um, design specifications or what, or, or whatever your uh, agency might have. So with, with, with all that said, um, PBS and the uh, Small Projects Program, we have a project life cycle that we adhere to. And this is our, our um, uh, our, our, our map, like cradle to grave, how we we approach any of our projects. So we have some uh, pre-planning phases. We have some strategic phases. Uh, we're developing a plan. We're executing, and then we're closing out. So our first phase is, is project identification. This is kind of our, our pre-planning. Uh, project is defined in a couple of ways. It could be defined um, in plan requests for tenant improvements or that or, or whatnot, or it can also be defined or triggered through uh, uh, a work uh, a work request in RITA that that will finally be developed into an RWA. And then once all that is, is, is squared up, then we go into the initiation. We start uh, looking at the project, looking at the requirements, looking at what we have, and, and strategizing about how how to move forward in project initiation. And once we do some, some pre-work and some needs assessment and whatnot, then we go into actually developing or planning um, what that project is. That's getting better, better, you know, more refined uh, requirements. That's acquisition planning. That's scheduling and, and the whole gambit in there. And then our next two, our next phase, which is, is broken up into two two different sub phases, is our is uh, when we execute the project or our execution. So um, if, there's a, if there's design involved, and um, then we have a, a design phase where we go through that, where we secure A&Es and go through a whole um, submission process and approval process that happens in the design phase. Once we have that all designed and we have a set of construction documents, and specifications, then we have our, and we'll also have our best cost estimates, then we can actually go into, into the construction, and the construction is exactly that. We construct the, um, the project, whatever that may be, and go through that whole, that, that whole process. Once we're, once we're at substantial completion and everyone's kind of happy, then um, we get into the closeout, and closeout for us is um, things like, um, when we're um, finishing up the punch list, we're doing uh, financial closeouts and, and, and all that sort of thing. 
So the next slide here, um, this is a breakdown of, of that graphic you just saw earlier. So what we, what we give to our project managers for a resource um, for them is we have something um, uh, in our internal website called Insight. Um, we have something called the, the PM Guide. And so this is a breakdown of those of those five phases that I just talked about, but really this is an index of um, step by step what happens in each of the phases. So this is a tool that we give give folks so that they can go through. And actually, we have information and and tools that match up with all of these different um, uh, activities. So, um, so one thing I wanted to kind of clarify is um, is what the pro project management role is in PBS and how we see that. So, so we see the project manager really as the one who leads and manages all the activities, um, coordinates all of that throughout the project life cycle. So they lead the development for, for project management plans, which we um, highly encourage and. For smaller, pro smaller, smaller projects, but then we um, uh, require for larger projects. Um, they also coordinate communications pl planning and any any kind of process uh, the team, the project team uh, should follow uh, during the project. Um, uh, he or she clarifies any initial requirements and actually puts together a final scope of work. Um, they give the, the PM. Um, on their own or with the, the help of uh, a regional cost estimator, they um, develop independent government cost estimates. Uh, throughout the process, they manage and control uh, any kind of project risks that, that may happen within the project and actually look for any opportunities to do things better. Um, they also look to minimize and manage any kind of changes um, as Everyone on this call, I'm sure, is well versed in any kind of changes later on in the execution could cost you uh, not only financially but but with your schedule. And speaking of schedule, um, you know the PM really is supposed to be keeping that project uh, on schedule within that budget and in the scope, uh, like I discussed on the on the triangle earlier. And then throughout uh, ex execution, um, especially. The PM monitors and reports project progress and status on a regular basis. So with that, I'm going to uh, toss it over to Don, who's going to talk about projects themselves. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. Um, <laughs> really. <laughs> this is Don Cottle. I'll take, uh, take the next few slides here, and uh, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the triangle, the PM triangle that uh, Steve referred to a little bit earlier. Um, so you see the PM triangle, all right, we have them in three bubbles, but they do overlap, and that's, that's the part we want to talk about in, in this slide, uh, particularly as it relates to you as the client. So what, is that, what does that mean? What does scope, schedule, and budget mean for you? Um, and the questions that you should be hearing from your PM to help uh, understand what your needs are. Um, so first, let's take the scope piece. Um, scope is all about your requirements. When we're talking to you, we want to fully understand what it is that you need. What is what is it that meets your mission? Um, and do you have any specific requirements? I think Steve alluded to you know some agencies might have design guides um, or certain things like that, and then those all help inform the requirements that are coming to the table that you are coming to the table with us to deliver for you okay um, and ultimately we you know we want to meet those requirements and make sure that the project is delivering a high quality product um, that is at the end of the day functional for you um, so you're going to see as we talk through some of the life cycle here it's important that that planning cycle take you know a little bit longer you know, we don't want to fast track the planning cycle because that planning cycle is all about understanding what you want. The better we understand what you want, the better the execution of the project will go. Okay? Delivering the project on time 
is also leading back to what are your expectations. Um, you as the client may have certain restrictions. Um, you may have seasonal things. Uh, typically comes to, IR, to, to mind is IRS has typically um, a period of time where they don't want us working in their space because that's their you know tax season is a perfect example of that. Uh, you as the client may have a certain expectation of when you want the work done because you have um, either a move out date from your current space. Um, or you have certain personnel coming on by a certain date that you need the space done by. Um, all of those are examples of, of potential time constraints that we need to know. Um, and, of course, we then need to marry those up with whatever other constraints we have on our side that we'll get into a little bit uh, later as well. Okay. So the timeliness is all about delivering the project within what is agreed upon schedule. So it's important for the project manager to work with you and set expectations of what the schedule for the overall project is going to look look like from beginning to end. Okay. And then of course all of that then sums up into the cost part. Well, what is it going to cost? Um, so we need to set expectations for you in terms of deliver what does it mean to deliver the project within budget? Um, what constraints might you have in terms of the available amount of money um, and, and understanding that. Um, there may even be restrictions in terms of when the money is available from your standpoint or when the money expires from your from an agency standpoint. Um, so those are all discussions that the project team needs to have with you in order to be able to deliver a project within an authorized budget. Okay? Um, and the reason we overlap those circles is because these three items together are what form the partnership between GSA and our client in order to be able to deliver a successful project. So it's important throughout that you see communication is the key to understanding all of the three constraints in this triangle um, and significantly making certain decisions in order to make the project successful. Next slide. So I'm going to talk more here about each of the kind of the, the legs of the triangle, if you will. Um, and first, let's deal with scope. Um, scope is, as I kind of indicated, is again about getting the understanding of what your requirements are, whether they're dictated by some design guide or um, just probing questions that we need to ask of you to make sure we understand what it exactly is you want. Um, so some of the things we've done uh, to improve the project scoping side of that um, is improving our intake process with dealing with regional resource boards and making sure, one, the bright resources are assigned to your project so that we can send the right people to you to ask those questions. Spending more time in that development phase. I think I indicated that earlier. The planning phase is really a key phase in any project life cycle that we should be spending the most time in to make sure we get it right. Get the, get the scoping part of the project right because that will reduce the number of change orders you have um, and the timeliness at which the execution portion of the project happens. Okay, um, we've also uh, over time uh, improved our communication within our own operation because building out a project is not just about dealing with you as the client. It's about understanding our building and understanding potential interactions or coordination that might need to happen with tenants adjacent to you. Um, or just how the facility is running. So it's not just simply about how the space gets built out. There are other impacts, and, and we within GSA have done better about communicating internally as well, make sure we understand the, the potential strategies that a building might have uh, to make your um, occupancy of the space the best that, that it can be. Okay? Um, and also the planning phase is about also promoting alternate work strategies to you to help you potentially improve your space. Um, you know, some clients just come to, to the table saying with an expectation of a need for space, um, and we as GSA have had uh, a longstanding uh, 
uh, success with reducing our space um, and doing different alternate workplace strategies to make our space more efficient while not occupying as much. Uh, so that's a discussion you should expect us to come to the table with as well as, well, how can we make your space more efficient to maximize the use of, of space and ultimately, at the end of the day, reduce your rent? So if we're able to get you down from 10,000 square feet down to seven or 8,000 square feet and still be highly functional, um, that's a, at the end of the day a rent savings for you. Okay, next slide. Let's talk about the schedule for a little bit. Um, internally, we measure the schedule on our projects. We measure whether the project is considered to be on time or not. <laughs> Um, it, we do that by requiring um, certain milestones from our project schedules. Uh, we, we've defined, and, and these are scalable, um, up to 18 potential milestones that a project schedule should have. Um, but every project is unique and, and has its own unique activities. So we encourage our project managers to use those milestones as a guideline, uh, but the number of milestones is going to vary. Uh, based on the size and complexity of the project. Um, so, and the schedule itself becomes a communication tool, hopefully, with you, the client. Um, so when that project manager develops that schedule of the project from beginning to end, uh, they can hopefully use that project schedule as a way to communicate to you when you should see certain things occurring. Okay? Um, and we've, we've strengthened our scheduling guidance um, and developed some standards. Um, as well as templates. Um, and within the last couple of years, we've strengthened the training that we also offer to our project managers how to better um, develop a schedule um, and what, do, what doing a more detailed schedule really looks like and, and the steps involved in that. Um, so very important initiatives that we've, we've had over the last couple of years to kind of strengthen schedule management performance uh, for our project managers to give you an accurate picture of when things are going to happen. Okay, next. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the cost side. Um, again, things that we've done within GSA to help strengthen our cost management uh, process. Um, we have a nationally consistent process with templates and methodologies for how things are estimated. Uh, we have estimating experts with, within our organization um, basically to assist our project managers. Um, you know, project managers by, by default are typically not estimators. They do estimating. They understand it. Uh, but, you know, they, they love the fact that we have resources in estimating experts, people who do estimating full time. Um, so we've, we've strengthened that gu guidance and, and policy part uh, to, to know that the project managers have a resource to go to uh, when developing and uh, reviewing their estimates. So in the long run, that hopefully is improving our cost estimate accuracy um, and, and ultimately improving the on budget portion of of our measures. Okay. Um, we've enhanced our training for project managers, for the ones who do do cost estimates, um, you know, making sure they're aware of, you know, the, the ins and outs of what it takes to, to prepare an estimate. Um, and we've also implemented some cost management guidance uh, in terms of the range of accuracies and uh, hopefully communication that we can get out to you so that you, the client, understand um, when you receive an estimate, as you should receive potentially multiple throughout the course of a project, to understand, well, what range of accuracy is that project? And I'll talk about that, actually, on the next slide, please. Okay. So drilling a little bit more into the cost management is important for you, to, you as a client to understand, um, you know, you should see an estimate at multiple phases of a project. Um, and, and it's all about the accuracy. Uh, you can kind of equate this to the, the building of a house, um, if, if you will, um, or, you know, searching for buying a house. Uh, depending on the requirements you, we talk about early on, you may get a very rough estimate 
um, because there's not a lot of information given or we really haven't had a chance to discuss, but you're still looking for a number to be able to put something on paper as to what you want to fund. Um, so think of the scenario if you tell your real estate agent, hey, I'm looking for a, a two-bedroom, three-bath house in a certain area, um, you know, that agent's going to come back to you with a lot of different offerings, a lot of different, you know, a wide price range potentially. Um, and it's not until you start getting really specific about what you want that that estimate's going to start to get refined. So that's what you see here in, in this chart is as we go through cost planning, which is really about helping you um, and us set expectations for the high-level budget that we need to go into the project versus the cost estimate, which then starts to get into the detail where you start having line-by-line um, items that address the specific requirements themselves. Um, and then overall, there's the control. How do we then, once we have the money, control the cost going forward? Um, so you see in the chart, again, I won't talk about every line, uh, but you know, during the identification and initiation phase, you're going with a very high-level estimate that has a wide range. You see it goes from potentially you know, minus 40 to plus 75% in terms of the range of accuracy that that estimate has. Um, again, because we don't have a lot of information, so we can't drill down into the details. But by the time you get to the construction phase or the end of a design phase, for that matter, you see your range of accuracy is a lot more precise. It's, it's plus, minus 7 plus 11% um, in terms of how detailed that estimate is. Um, so that's important to know. And, and so when you put the money to to, to us in an RWA, it's important for you to understand the range of accuracy because that impacts whether we're going to need to modify that RWA later on simply based on that range of accuracy and, and how detailed we were able to get in developing the requirements. Okay, next slide. So a couple initiatives. Um, as I said early, um, the PM triangle is is scope schedule budget, um, and and the three of the the three of those sides intersect purposely, and, and the the culmination of all that is about the partnership. So how do we partner with you to make sure that we understand all three legs of that triangle um, and deliver the best product for you, uh, project for you. Um, and so here uh, on the stage are a couple of initiatives that we've got going on to make it more transparent or improve our relationship with, with you um, so, so we can be transparent about how the projects are going and give you more insight to, to what to do. Um, so first, the project, the customer dashboard. Um, customer dashboard has, has been rolled out over the last couple of years. Um, and I believe is now available for all clients. Um, and so there's a link here to how to get to the dashboard. We have a nice YouTube video with the tutorial on how to do that. Um, that dashboard is what gives you insight to any project. Um, certainly it, it, it is basically to supplement what you hopefully are already talking about with your GSA project manager um, on status. Uh, but it definitely gives you an alternative, alternative way to find out kind of what's going on. Um, it gives you also the opportunity to look at um, a portfolio of projects that you may be managing as, as an agency. So um, client charter agreements. Uh, we've started to, to instill these um, for our client-facing projects, encourage our project managers to, to work on uh, charter agreements, Again, to better understand the requirements as they come forward. Um, using project managers, using project communication plans, um, and tailoring those plans to meet your needs as the client. Um, so again, having those discussions with you as we start to get into, um, you know, as we get into the planning and execution phases of a project, it's important to understand how we're going to communicate with you, who we're communicating with, um, you know, that often gets very complicated, both internally and externally, because uh, you may have multiple layers of people that need to be communicated with, um, depending on what it's for. You might have a budget person, you might have somebody more technical, so, so having a communication plan is key to the project success. 
okay? Holding regular meetings and status updates, also important to that. Um, doing post-client surveys. Um, so we have, uh, we have some surveys that are going out, not necessarily to all clients, but we're hoping to expand that. Um, but surveying the client at the end of the job to see how well we did um, and if there's poten any potential for improvement. Um, and of course, promoting follow-up, having our project manager follow up with you as the client, uh, again, to see if you're satisfied with the space and, and need any more support. Um, and we are continually developing tools and templates, uh, again, to help PMs in, custom, in supporting you as the customer. Um, and we've increased our overall oversight uh, of projects, and that's one of the main functions that, that Steve, myself, and, and our counterpart Khadija have um, in kind of working with our project managers in the region and giving them general oversight and the tools that they need to help be better project managers. Okay, so that brings us to fulfilling your project needs. Um, Sorry. Uh, some of you may have heard of GPM. Uh, this is just something within our organization as a, as a way to um, strengthen. And project GPM is basically a project model uh, that helps our project managers understand the framework, all of the framework that we've just talked about. Um, you know, what does it mean to go through the project life cycle? <clears throat> And what are the tools available to them? Um, and you've and some of you, really on the court side, may have heard about the court's service validation initiative, the SDI, um, as again a way to strengthen the partnership, in this case between GSA and the courts, on just how we deliver projects and how we can in, improve that relationship. Um, we've increased the use of our project management software. Um, and the, our project management software is one of the key data pieces that helps feed the customer dashboard. Um, so project manager's use of a, a consistent software um, is, is what helps. We're hoping to make a more friendly experience for the project manager, also gives them a, a, a stronger tool to use, again, to put all of the pieces together to make a successful project. Um, project management assignment early is also something we've worked on um, to make sure uh, you've seen this with the work request process um, in RITA. Uh, so the uh, great reason for you to send the work request in is so that we can get that project manager assigned to you early before the money is ready to come um, and work through that kind of planning phase uh, with you. Um, and again, assigning a project manager early and making sure that project manager is, is the best fit that we have uh, for you, the client. Okay. Um, partnering with our internally with our portfolio planners um, and and our client executives uh, again as a way to understand you, the client, uh, not just at the project level, but to understand the uh, your client needs perhaps across a portfolio. So that's an important thing that a project manager should know or at least know that is available to them. And we have folks um, at a client level working across um, all the entire country. Um, and again, uh, we continue to promote alternate work strategies to help you reduce your space and rent in, in the long run, which is a huge benefit to the taxpayer. So specifically, next slide, please. Um, specifically, some of the things that our group is doing with relation to the small project program, um, uh, enhanced focus on our small projects. Uh, so that's where, again, Steve, myself, and our counterpart, Khadija, uh, working very heavily uh, with our regional project managers to help them understand and give them the tools they need uh, to help successfully deliver projects. Uh, we've been doing skills assessment, again, to better understand the strengths that our project managers have um, so that they can be paired up properly with, with the right projects. Um, 
we've been now part of an internal construction excellence council uh, where we hear a lot about uh, best practices uh, going on across the country. Um, industry partners, we we. had a long-standing partnership with the Construction Industry Institute, uh, again, as a way to um, improve our knowledge about the things that are out there um, and, and, again, help deliver more successful projects. Um, increased emphasis on sustainability. Sustainability is a huge thing for us in, in the agency and make sure sure we're delivering sustainable projects and using sustainable products uh, to the best of our ability. Um, and again, the customer initiatives, uh, court service validation is one example of that. Um, and we've spent a lot of time certifying our project managers. Um, so this FACT PPM is a nationally recognized certification uh, that we ask all of our project managers to obtain, uh, especially our new ones coming on board. Um, we ask them to go through a, a decently rigorous prod, uh, training program to get uh, PPM certified. And I'll turn it back over to Steve to, to sum up the expectation. Hey, thanks, Don. So basically, it's just a wrap-up slide. You know, looking ahead, we just wanted to kind of really convey to you folks that we are, we're doing a few things. Um, to really enhance our the project delivery excellence for projects we do for you. So we are have really been focusing in the last couple of years on improved scope development. We talked about how, how the, the, uh, we've had a lot of um, a lot of focus on that planning phase of the life cycle. Because so, uh, um, you know obviously if we better plan and get better information, it helps everything along the way. You can also um, Expect some better schedule management. In the last year and a half, we actually um, had um, uh, some a SME um, on the central office level who is, is um, coordinating our national schedule management um, program, which we didn't have before. And along with that, um, we, uh, we've had for a while, but it's been really ramping up in the last couple of years. This is a comprehensive cost management um, program that we have within Central Office. We have uh, what we call the P120, and there's a lot of tools that, that go along with that, estimating tools um, that have really ramped up, I'd say, in the last couple of years. And with all that, um, we are really promoting stronger communications through that global project management uh, kind of thing through how, whatever means possible, being as, as transparent as possible. So that's what we have. Um, I just wanted to kind of clarify for those who may not be um, versed in the, what the small project zone manager is. Um, so there are three zones, um, and they're, they're broken up by um, GSA zones. So Kadisha Robinson, who's manning our chat box, answering some questions there. She's the Zone A uh, small project zone manager, and um, she oversees and supports uh, our region 1, 2, 3, and NCR in Washington, D.C. Don, who was just speaking, is our Zone B um, small project manager. He's, he's located in Chicago, and he supports and oversees uh, regions 4, 5, 6, and 7. And myself, Steve Scavo, I'm the West Coaster. Uh, for Zone C, I support our regions 8, 9, and 10. And there we have it. So, Dave, I guess we'll open up to questions. Okay. All right. Great. Well, thank you uh, for that. Um, we do have some questions uh, that we can present. Um, is there a project management certification program for GSA? Is it open to everyone or just the GSA team? I'll take that. 
Um, so I, I think that was the last part of my slide. Uh, our, our project manager certification program is the FAC PPM, so that's FAC PPM. Um, all of our project managers are expected to go through that um, and, and get certified and then from there maintain. Um, and that is not just the GSA thing. That is actually a government-wide um, certification. So we, we have a, a couple levels of that. Um, we have, um, I, I believe it's out of OMB, um, but um, we follow those, um, OMB sets what uh, the kind of levels and what kind of, um, I forget, uh, skill sets you're supposed to have. So uh, GSA has taken that and we have come, um, we have a couple, you know, levels one, two, and three. So our earlier folks or newer folks will, um, will, uh, will need to have at least a level one, and then all the way up to the more advanced folks who have to do a level three. Um, and that's basically um, a two-week class, that the way we've set it up um, for GSA. Um, and then it also has a lot of um, requirements for continuing education uh, every two years. Okay, let's see. Um, hang on one second. There was another one here. What is the difference between um, EPM and GPM? Yeah, I can take that one again. Yeah, um, yeah sure. Yeah, I think uh, I think we did answer it in the chat, but to, to kind of sum that up, um, e EPM is a tool. Um, so that's GSA's project management tool, stands for Electronic Project Management, um, and, and it's it's a tool put in place for our project managers to help manage their project, um, manage the status, the schedule, the budget, all of that, keep that all in one nice tool so they have a, a, a place to to, to kind of run the project internally, if you will. Um, think of it like, you know, use of tools like Microsoft Project um, and things like that. Those, those are all kind of what G, uh, what EPM is, is helping to solve the, the tool piece. Um, GPM is, is more of a, a philosophy or a principle, if you will. Um, and that's kind of what we covered in, in this slide deck. Um, GPM is about well, how do you manage the project? How do you communicate? How you know? How do we get project managers assigned early? Um, what what is the project life cycle? Um, so that's the difference between EPM and GPM. EPM is the tool. GPM is the overall practice and principle that we have in place um, to to make project managers successful. Uh, I'll add to that for GPM. So that is it is a data based. Uh, a database that you go into and our project managers go in there and they put things like the status of the project, uh, uh, milestone schedule dates uh, for, for the schedule, and that's, it. that's tracked throughout. Um, there's some uh, but budget and finance information there as well. So each one of these project managers, there's a project file in this, in this database system. And then what happens is uh, central office, or even at the, at the regional, at the regional level, they can pull reports um, from EPM on whatever subset of projects you you want to do, uh, you want to look at. So it, it has a kind of a two-tiered thing. Um, so EPM was is designed for the for the project manager to have all their all, all their information and data in one place. You can upload things like you know the MS project schedules. Someone asked. Um, you can put documents in there, et cetera, et cetera. So that that's one level, the, an important level. But also, what this electronic system does for us is it allows central office or any kind of management within GSA to grab some data to see how we're doing, uh, uh, even you know regionally or or nationally, et cetera. And a lot of the data that's in EPM feeds the customer dashboard. So that's, that's our yeah. transparency piece is where we're able to pull the data from our project management system, 
put it in the dashboard for you to see also what the status and schedule and things like that are. Exactly. Okay. Um, who pays for the cost estimating services? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so in regular standard kind of project work, uh, estimating included is covered under the fees that GSA provides. Um, so um, those services are, are, are covered uh, within existing fees. The only time, the, the only, you're going to hear um, something, some things about direct charging that GSA does. Um, there's some services that are over and beyond what the standard fee will cover, um, you know, excessive traveling or other things. Um, and in those kind of cases, uh, GSA will direct charge for the for those services uh, and or or travel. Okay. Um, what are the requirements for access to the dashboard? The link to the YouTube video will actually go through how you can access the dashboard. Um, it, it does require a Mac.gov account, which anybody can set up. Um, but other than that, I, I, I will defer to the YouTube video to give you the instructions on how to actually get to the dashboard and set up that account. Okay. Let's see if we have uh, anything else. Hold on just one second. I see some um, um, I'm just going to jump in here, Dave. Um, about cost estimates, that chart that we were showing before, it's just to kind of show you, I can actually I can go back to it. Wherever that was. Okay, so what, what this is, this is the basic parameters and expectations that we have for our estimates. So in the earlier phases, as Don said, when you're in the identification initiation phases, you see the accuracy range is pretty wide, and that's wide because there's not a lot of, there's a lot of, not a lot of knowns at that point, or requirements may not be fully developed, or they're not developed at all, and that sort of thing. Um, but as we go through the phases, the, the idea is the more information you have, the better that estimate's going to be. So we go through these are the types. You know, so you go from an order of magnitude, which is way ballpark, and as you go down through the phases, you get closer and closer to very, very accurate um, estimates. So basically, at the end of design, you're going to have when you have when you have all your construction documents and your specifications and whatnot all developed. Obviously, that's going to be the best estimate you're going to have before construction starts. Okay. <clears throat> Can Microsoft project schedules be updated from EPM? Uh, I'm not sure about updated, but um, if folks are using MS Project for their schedules, um, it can be um, uh, uploaded into uh, EPM. But actually, okay. EPM also has its own, its own scheduling in there as well, and that can be used as well by our project managers. I will, here's sort of an open-ended one. Can you expand on prospectus projects further? Prospectus projects, what they are? Yes. Okay, uh, Okay. so Congress has estab establishes uh, what they call prospectus threshold. And Long story short, if anything is over that threshold, it, it, it gets adjusted every so, so many years. But right now, it's at $3.095 million. So anything above that has to, be, has to pass through Congress and get their approval. I mean, each and every project. Uh, anything below that, which is a small project, 
means that we we don't have to go to Congress um, for every kind of project or any kind of expenditure. It's we're under the, the prospectus level, so it's that's discretionary spending that we're doing on our own. So long story short, Congress has to approve, or we we can do it on our own. Keep keeping in mind that that's uh, a limitation on funding that GSA is putting forth. So you, as the agency, if you're giving us RWA money, you have to follow your own rules in terms of limitations. Um, so, and, and and that money that you give us can supplement the money that we may be putting to the table as well. Um, so, yeah, those prospectus limitations are for what we refer to as our BA 54 or 55 money. Um, again, RWA money is, is subject to your own internal limitation as to how much money you can provide us, GSA. All right. Hang on for just one more second. See if there's any other uh, questions that we can have you answer. And, and you know, talking about YouTube stuff, it's just I got cost estimating in my head right now. Um, there is there is a CES um, session about cost estimating that I would promote looking at that as well. And that goes through all the tools and gets a little deeper dive on all the things that we were talking about. Oh, excellent. All right. Well, uh, that looks like it wraps up the questions. So as a result, We'd first like to thank uh, Steve and Don for this, this presentation. We also want to thank all of you out there in the audience, our clients, who are able to join us. As we mentioned, we will post formal written responses to the questions and comments in our chat pane as a frequently asked question document for future reference on our website. We also have a couple of uh, client enrichment series presentations coming up. We'll be hosting an additional training session on eReader, GSA's external RWA entry and tracking application, the second Tuesday of each month. So if you or a colleague would like to attend our next one, that will be Tuesday, May 12th, and you can register uh, online. On Thursday, May 21st, we will have a presentation on what to expect from fee reform. I know there's a lot of uh, questions, comments, and so forth out there on the RW fee reform, so that would be a ideal place to get some information. As you all know, the goal of the Client Enrichment Series is to engage our audience in workplace topics that contribute to your mission success and to your effective management of your real estate and workplace programs. Unless someone else has uh, anything to add or ask, that completes our CES presentation for today, and we thank you all for joining us. I'm throw up the final polls. Uh, Dave? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot about that. Let's let's do this final poll. Okay. Was this presentation beneficial to you? Well, Steve and Don, it looks like you all hit the home run. And for those of you who want more information, go ahead and contact us and we'll see what we can do to assist. All right, uh, Steve and Don, anything else? That's fine. Uh, thank everyone to take, uh, for taking time out of their day um, to join us. And um, please reach out to um, your regional account folks, um, our client 
engagement uh, world, and even re reach out to us if you have any questions. We're here to support you. Thanks. Hi, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.